talking to Carmen Mania. She's a global leadership coach and working with women in the areas of authentic leadership, imposter syndrome, and inner critic. She's also a corporate mindfulness trainer, combining mindfulness, self-compassion, emotional balance, and coaching as leadership tools. She is originally from Romania, currently living in Denmark. Thanks for coming to the interview today. Thank you for, for inviting me. How is it going for you these days? I find less change around me. How about you? Mm. Um, it is a little bit similar in terms of, of work. In the same time, I think it changed a lot in the, in the interactions with, uh, with the people I'm working with and with friends and family. Somehow the, the topics have changed and also a little bit more worries and, and a little bit of different habits around me. So, um, yeah, personally, it, it is pretty much the same, but uh, still there, there is a lot of, uh, of a different uh, environment right now going on. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely a different environment. And when you mentioned topics changed, so what are the main uh, patterns coming up? Worry, uncertainty, uh, feeling unsafe. There are some, um, some topics that keep on popping up. It's a time of uncertainty and worry. And I'm sure that your clients are finding your service very helpful. Thank you for saying that, uh, Bolorma. It's, um, I think now it's, it's a moment when we are being at service in the sense of um, really using our humanity besides our experience uh, to, to support uh, everyone else and, and so to support ourselves. Um, as, you, as you already know, I'm, I'm working also with, um, with mindfulness and uh, now it's the ideal moment to, to use my, my mindfulness uh, practice into, into real life and to, to really see how personally I can uh, keep my calm and how personally I can uh, deal with my own emotions mm. and um, how I can personally be self-compassionate in order to, to be able to, to serve the others. Mm. So it is definitely a moment where many years of practice um, are, are showing uh, their value. And um, when I, I can... Um, I can use the practice even more because uh, as we were talking earlier, all around us, uh, it is a little bit of panic. It is a little bit of uh, news uh, who are not very encouraging. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we don't have many answers. I say, how do we gracefully navigates uncertainty in general because now we, we have an example with the, with the virus yet how do we navigate uncertainty in life how do we navigate challenges in life how how do we trust ourselves that we have the strength the power and the willingness to go through wherever comes our way because uh, if we are Realistic life is made both of happy moments and of suffering moments. And how do we learn to really celebrate the happy moments when we have them? And how do we navigate and accept also the challenging moments when, when we have them? Yeah, wow. And I see also that moving countries and building a career means dealing with a lot of uncertainty. And I see mm -hmm. that there's a huge link. What brought you to Denmark, and how long has it been? Uh, thank you for, thank you for the question, and thank you for for making the parallel. Indeed, uh, I think um, any transition is full of uncertainty and uh, full of expectations. It's about how do we navigate this. Uh, so, uh, what brought me to to Denmark was curiosity, was uh, the curiosity of embracing a new culture, a new working system, um, a different way of interacting, different way of uh, of doing what I was already doing. 
and it was a delightful journey, as I was saying earlier, of course, with, uh, with ups and downs, uh, because life is, uh, is having, it's, it's having both ups and downs. It's, it's not always uh, just easy and it's not always um, just challenging. So it's, it's a lot about really recognizing this. I came to Denmark soon there will be actually nine years in summer and i still feel I'm, I'm transitioning and i still feel i'm adapting even if i feel very much uh, very much being at home i appreciate many of the values uh, here and i appreciate a lot uh, it is interesting when we talk about about transitioning and when we talk about uh, different countries there is always um, the distinction between us and them Mm. Um, which is at the global level and wherever we go in in this world or, or even in the you know in the next village even the other family yeah. right it's it's us and them <laughs> and uh, and it's always a little bit like can i trust this other person or what's the habits there or uh, how do they do things or uh, also this comparing with each other yeah uh, so um, I think this this became uh, more clear about uh, about us and them, uh, and me being in in some cases part of them uh, as an expat, uh, but in the same time being a part of uh, us us as I was part of the expat community. So uh, there is always uh, belonging somewhere if we if we try to see that. When you also mentioned that. I part of me is still transitioning. How does transition feel to you personally? I, I think transition uh, can be very much um, seen as growth. Interestingly enough, I don't feel necessarily connected to a piece of land. Mm. Um, I don't want to be ungrateful. I really, I really love uh, both my country and then my, my host country. Yet somehow uh, for me, if you ask me where I feel home in terms of land is, is out in the nature, out in the mountains. Um, but um, transition is a sense of growth and a sense of of adapting and the sense of, of belonging and in the same time of keeping the freedom, being adaptable and understanding that we are all extremely similar and in the same time extremely different. <laughs> it it might sound like a paradox, but that's that's the reality. We are we are very similar in, in many aspects and, and very different in other aspects and just really keeping this open mind and, and again curiosity, curiosity curiosity and genuine interest in people in who they are what they are behind their nationality behind their profession behind a role that they have in society but who they really are i think that's helping tra transition to be a lifetime journey but in the same time to be a, a wonderful journey yeah wow your messages are very powerful. When you were telling me about growth and being open to the people, culture, not many people, not many people find openness to different culture immediately. Mm. At the beginning, there's the resistance. Nine years back, did you have the similar experience like that? And if you had, how did you overcome? Yeah, it is very true, and uh, and indeed there is a lot of resistance. Uh, again, us and them. Uh, if we start even from the family, mom's family, dad's family, right? Yeah. <laughs> so different, and grandparents from mom's side and grandparents from dad's side. Yeah. I think what really helped was growing on my mindfulness path, on the compassion and self-compassion path, and understanding that actually people are not are not judgmental because they have something against, but because they try to protect themselves oh. because they are afraid of, of the unknown. I found that more people trust themselves. Um, more people trust the others. By allowing myself also to trust myself and to trust that it's nothing wrong with me if I'm excluded and I don't need to fight back or to be angry with those people, but more to trust that, that I'm fine the way I am and 
maybe people haven't been exposed to to certain uh, groups or maybe people have been exposed to certain groups and and they have been disappointed in, in certain ways so it's really uh, being more than empathetic but really really being compassionate and really understanding that people are doing their best work with what they have in those moments mm. and i notice that actually people that have been expats at their own uh, time in other countries it was easier for them to embrace and, and to accept the, what is going on so again the exposure and them experiencing and, and getting used to different cultures and getting used to be the outsiders helped them to accept more this was one of the things and the second one was the fact that i was uh, immediately exposed to a very diverse group to many many nationalities i think again curiosity came into place yeah. and uh, uh, really the willingness to understand without being judgmental mm. and it's not always easy if it comes back to self-compassion and to trust uh, once i was showing myself more self-compassion, more trust was coming and I could be more in the present. I could see the things the way they are without avoiding to see certain things and without making other things bigger than they actually were. This has been too important part to actually have been growing me both, both personally and professionally because personally I could adapt this year. I could um, embrace more both uh, the locals and the international community professionally really helped me to be able to work with people from, from all over the world which has been a huge advantage all this professional transition yeah sounds like also your profession helped you become this very curious open-minded understanding also compassionate person it's been nine years, your business and your career is going very well, successfully. And throughout this journey, when you are building your career in a new culture, what did you find the most challenging? If you could name one thing. Ah, the most, uh, the, the biggest challenge was being uh, an outsider. As I was saying, coming and not only being an outsider, but I, coming from Romania, Eastern Europe, in, and in Europe is not always really attractive. <laughs> um, there are some judgments around people from Eastern Europe. Uh, even if I had a, a great career behind me, maybe I, I didn't have the best nationality, or the right nationality, uh, or some places, which which could have been a handicap, but in the same time was was really again help being a big teacher for me to uh, to see actually what being a Romanian and what's the quality in there and also to understand people why maybe uh, they, they have their reservations. So it was this us and them. I was really missing um, a local network. So I, I started to, to develop um, an international network, but I was still missing the local network it's very important to have people supporting us locally to have people um, recommending us locally that's really essential but on the other hand having an international tour was really the my biggest advantage before being a self-employed i worked for like recruiting and onboarding designers from all over the world uh, this was for them the biggest dream to be designers at Lego yet they had to relocate with their families informally I was actually coaching them and their families um, adapting to a new way of living mm -hmm. I was really exposed to many different people with many different concerns this gave me the advantage of being able when I started on my own to working with people from all over the world a few weeks ago i talked with somebody and asked well how many uh, nationalities coach and trained and try to figure out uh, how many have been and actually i noticed that there have been people from more than 30 countries from uh, four different continents that i've been working with most probably i couldn't have done that if i wouldn't have been 
an expat myself and I couldn't have been exposed to, to so many different nationalities and if I wouldn't have had my own challenges. Curiosity started with my own need to be at peace. It has been a huge challenge in the same time it showed to be a, a great gift. <laughs> Yeah. The most uh, difficult challenges and stars in our life happen to be the biggest grateful gifts for us. Mm. Wow, that's a great experience. And thank you for painting that picture in us. If you could speak yourself before moving to Denmark nine years back, mm. knowing what you know now, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, wow. I, I guess trusting myself more from the, from the beginning. I was trusting myself, but I think I was trusting myself more professionally than as a person. Many of us nowadays, we, we are identifying ourselves a lot with our professions. Yeah. And many times we put aside who we are as a person. If I would have just reminded myself that, uh, yeah, I'm a caring person, I'm a courageous person, I'm a curious person, uh, that I have all the resources I need. I think that would have made my journey a little bit easier in the <laughs> We, we all need to start growing somewhere and I'm, I'm grateful I've been for all this and I could actually develop this these skills and I could start seeing in myself um, who I really am without you know taking pride necessarily but really let's say being at home in my own company and, and with myself uh, really knowing that no matter what comes my way, and again, we connect to what's happening these days, whatever comes my way, I, I have the resources to deal with everything. I have ways to also support those that are around me and to support also those that are far away. Even if physically we are far away, uh, there is a connection that uh, is stronger than, than the physical distance. Carmen, you are equipping us with this amazing wisdom. I find your words very inspiring. And I think it's much needed advice and wisdom in this time of uncertainty. Thank you for sharing that. You say bringing different aspects of yourself to work and embracing yourself as holy, finding comfort in yourself. And as a mindfulness expert, leadership coach, what do you find the most meaningful in your work? It's so interesting to look back and I'm really noticing how, how people start to notice the magic that it is within themselves. Uh, this last week I had uh, a coaching call with someone that I've been working for a year now and uh, she was so sweet. She said, well, we have one year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we really love to say, yeah, definitely we have to celebrate that. And it was so interesting how she actually has been, you know, if you look at a flower, which is like a really closed end and how, how she was really not trusting that much. She knew what was in there, but really not trusting it. And now she was all blooming even even through these uh, moments of uncertainty. She was like totally a blooming confident and and really knowing what she stands for and and who she really is and having the power of loving herself and putting herself out there that was uh, extremely touching because again we are so tough on ourselves uh, these days i work a lot with mindfulness in organizations but i also do mindfulness um, in the profession of, of coaching for example with coaches and coach many many leaders the biggest challenge everywhere is this trust in ourselves um, we maybe believe that we are good professionals even if we have doubts there too but the true trust in who we really are, the true trust that we have all the resources and all the potential. When I say potential, actually, uh, it's a little bit maybe artificial because we are born with all these things, but 
while growing up, we learn how to stop ourselves from a lot of things. We learn how to be tough on ourselves. We learn how to punish ourselves. We learn how to respond to certain stimuli. The path is changing so much, but we are actually born uh, being good. We are born being uh, happy. We are born, I usually give the metaphor of people are afraid of failure. And I'm giving the metaphor of babies who start walking, oh. right? So they walk and fall and walk and fall and walk and fall for so many times. And they don't say, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm not going to walk again ever. They just, <laughs> just fast stand up and keep on walking and laugh and cry and laugh and cry and keep on walking and the same with with adults we we forget that's okay to fall we forget that it's part of the learning process and and even in the simple metaphor of of walking if we take it further even as adults once you know i always stumble on something and and, and fall or skiing or doing something you know we, we end up falling and this doesn't mean that we are not able to walk again it's important to trust that failure is part of, of our journey. For one of the reasons for which I work with, with the inner critic and with the imposter syndrome, because so many people, they feel that I'm, I'm not good enough or they are going to discover soon that I'm not as they thought. Or there is that critical voice who says, oh, don't do that. That's dangerous. You might fail. People might judge you. All they do, they try to keep us safe. Again, I, I use a metaphor and I say that they are like overprotecting parents. <laughs> they, they try to keep us safe, but in the same time, by being so safe, we don't dare doing things. And they really support and encourage people to, to try out things, to try out to, to trust themselves and to trust also when they fail, then that's okay. We all fail and to connect with each other a lot of us think oh it's only me failing it's only me suffering it's only me having problems mm -hmm. oh we all have these ideas one way or the other so it's it's so important to really know that we all connect through this and that we all have the ability to stand up and to move forward and this is actually the resilience that we can cultivate and we can work with day after day, no matter what challenges come, be it uh, being an expert, being it being corona or being it suffering of, of something even deeper. We have the ability to, to move forward one way or the other. I'm resonating with this idea that you find meaning in awakening magic in your client which is what you've just covered and trusting themselves, really believing in themselves or who or what event awakened your magic in yourself or have you always been this way? Oh, that's a very good question. Let's say maybe 15 years ago, I was really trying to do a million of things in the same time, trying to go as fast as I can, um, really not looking into myself, but the, as I was saying, uh, how can I achieve quicker, faster, um, wherever I want to achieve. Um, and in the same time, I was able to really grow people around me. I was so supportive and I was supporting people to to develop so beautifully, to expand yet I was not allowing myself to expand. Um, I was finding so difficult to believe that it's okay for me to fail. It would have been okay for everybody else to fail, but not for me. <laughs> and um, that it is okay to love everybody else, but not myself, because I have to be tough on myself to, to reach the results. That was was not fulfilling was on the one side fulfilling but because i was i was doing great work with other people it was not fulfilling for myself that i was not able to do this work with myself and in the moment when i have been confronted with the idea that i as well might be worthy of loving myself yeah. was like oh really that was really Really powerful and and I was kind of resisting in the beginning the more I developed this um, self-love and not in a selfish way but really in an in an altruistic way I realized that more I can actually understand the others and more 
I can support others. So it has been uh, a transforming journey for for myself. And even if uh, deep inside, I've been always uh, caring and then sensitive, and um, I was also very um, goal oriented and 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 uh, into action. Uh, but again, what was really missing was the self love, self care, and that for sure made the biggest difference in my own life and in the life of uh, of the people I'm working with. I want to develop on what's um, self-love, self-loving, but we have limited time and Carmen is running mindfulness training online, which is starting in 20 minutes. I just wanted to leave a few moments with you to reflect on our conversation maybe if you have few things to say to the people who would be watching this what would you say um i have a few words maybe of reminding people um of who they are i would like to to invite everyone maybe to to pause for a moment and to um, to really close their eyes and maybe to remember themselves, um, maybe being small or maybe being just a little bit older, and to remind themselves of a moment when they were like really at their full power, really uh, joyful and uh, and feeling that they can do anything they want. And could have been a child who maybe was doing something naughty, but still thought that has all the power in the world, or could have been an adult who was taking a tough decision and yet still feeling empowered. But just really remembering a moment when you felt your full power. And knowing that this full power that you experienced in that moment, it's, it's in you. Nobody can, can take it away. And you can make use of it at any moment. It's just about remembering yourself, letting go of maybe expectations, Letting go of conditioning and really connecting with yourself as a strong, beautiful human being. And slowly opening your eyes if your eyes have been closed and really taking with you this power that you have, this strength that you have, knowing that you don't need to have your eyes closed. You don't need to make a visualization to, to feel it. But just maybe you can sometimes just touch your two fingers and knowing that is, is there for you. That's your magic formula for your inner power. <laughs> what a powerful exercise. I feel really connected with myself and I'm sure that the audience will find this exercise very uh, meaningful and helpful in their journey. Thank you for coming to the interview. I certainly enjoyed talking to you and every sentences you shared, it really resonated with me. And you are a woman of wisdom, living your career with this amazing purpose and meaning and also this huge clarity around and you now you found magic in yourself and you've been serving your clients to find magic in themselves and at what what a meaningful journey that's what i wanted to say 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Paloma. And uh, yes, well, I think I'm I'm a student and I'll always be. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, for being here with me and for being curious and, and asking all these questions. And thank you to anyone who who has been listening. Hopefully uh, you get something that, that resonates with you as well. And uh, yeah, stay stay curious and stay connected. You'll, you'll find the magic which is there. <laughs> Yeah, magic is in us. Exactly. Have a have a great day, everyone. Yeah, have a great day, everyone. See you soon.